look at the contrast, the raw panic caused by a young man with an assault rifle and the slick promotional video from the company that made it. We love to build great guns. That's Marty Daniel, founder of Daniel Defense, which authorities say made one of the weapons used by the Uvalde shooter around his 18th birthday, and which posted this provocative image of a toddler a week before the slaughter. It's morally unconscionable. I'm shocked, but not surprised, you know, that somebody is doing this. Like, of course they are, because they can, and they can make money doing it. Uh, but they really, they need to stop. And they need to either, like, we either shame them into stopping or uh, legislate or regulate them into stopping. The company took that image down, and yet Georgia-based Daniel Defense is a small firearms company with a big knack for headlines. And my family's safety is my highest priority. For example, when the NFL refused this Daniels ad for the Super Bowl because it promoted guns, Marty turned the rejection into an avalanche of attention. The majority of the Super Bowl uh, fans have the same uh, values that we have at Daniel Defense, and that is we believe uh, in, in uh, protecting our families. Shame on you! Gun control activists say the company is clearly going after younger customers with nods to pop culture icons and video games, while Marty keeps railing about gun control for the older set, as he did in this Outdoor Hub interview some years ago. The anti-Second Amendment crowd just looks for any excuse to ban guns in any way they can. Amid the anger after Uvalde, the company pulled out of this year's NRA convention, its display replaced with a popcorn stand. The company website says, we are deeply saddened by the tragic events. We will cooperate with all federal, state, and local law enforcement authorities in their investigations. That pledge may be tested. Congress is asking Daniel for details about how he operates, noting your company continues to manufacture large quantities of assault weapons and aggressively market them to the public. The deadly impact of your products is by design. While the company keeps leaning on its message of freedom, shooting sports, and growth. It's the way we do business. It's the way we pay attention to every detail. It's the quality that we put into every product. We asked Daniel Defense for any further comment. We're still waiting on anything more from them. Worth noting, though, that letter from Congress says they found weapons from Daniel Defense in the room with the shooter in Las Vegas a few years ago when all those people were killed at that concert there. That's the kind of spotlight that even companies like this that crave attention may not like moving forward. Poppy? Tom Foreman, thank you for that really important reporting tonight. Let me bring in Ed Scruggs, a Texas-based gun control advocate who, at Governor Greg Abbott's request, was a member of two task forces following mass shootings in Texas in 2018 and 2019. Ed, thank you for being with me tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Both of those efforts ended up resulting in nothing. No meaningful gun reforms were passed in Texas after those mass shootings in 2018 and 2019. And you say despite this horrific massacre in Uvalde at the elementary school, you don't think anything will change. Why? It's, it's unlikely. And believe me, working in this field for so long, it hurts my heart to say it. But through my experience in 2018 and 2019, um, you know, before you ever step into the ring with someone, you need to be very clear-eyed about your opponent. And, and I learned that our state leaders, at least, realize the danger that's out there, the threat to public safety, um, but they are not going to buck their base which is becoming more and more radicalized with each day. Uh, in, in these meetings, the governor started them by being open to a red flag law, some laws regarding the reporting of stolen firearms, stronger storage laws, which was a good start. And, and, it, and he ended up abandoning all of his proposals well, when the legislative session started. So is, that just gives you an idea. Our viewers are looking at video of you sitting right next to Governor Abbott. This is May of yes. 2013. And, and you talked about that moment saying 2018. You were surprised, uh, but wel welcomed that he seemed very receptive, especially to red flag laws. You brought them up. You said, look, this passed in Indiana. He said, well, if it, I'm paraphrasing if it's a pass in a red state, you know, there should be likelihood it could do well here. And then, and then that completely, completely changed. But he did say this week, Governor Abbott, the status quo is unacceptable. But you have no faith 
in that? Well, you have to you have to parse the words and read between the lines. Um, he says the status quo is unacceptable, but what does that mean? I've also heard him say all the laws passed in 2019 will be revisited. Well, that wasn't very much. I I think. I was impressed in my initial meetings with him. His breadth of knowledge and understanding of the issue is very deep. He knew what a red flag law was. He knew what the current regulations were, and that was a good start. Um, so then when he abandoned the proposal and ran away from it um, the first time, um, I can say, hey, you know, I know there's political pressure, but there was no excuse for the second time not doing anything. And he and other state leaders, including our lieutenant governor, um, made clear signals that they knew the dangers that were out there and that were posed by this. Our lieutenant governor said he would take an arrow to the heart to oppose the NRA to pass expanded background checks. Well, what happened to that? Nothing. And, and the people of Texas and the people of this nation need to realize that, that that's where we are. They ran from their proposals because they are afraid of a base that will not bend. So that's why we have to be very realistic about the prospect of talks here. As long as they stay in power, as long as Congress stays the way it is, the state legislature stays the way it is, it is going to get worse. Prepare yourselves for that. So we just that doesn't mean we give up. We just have to recommit as individuals and find new ways to continue the, to continue the fight. And you need those voices with the seat at the table as you had at Scruggs. We will we will mm -hmm. watch. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you so much. Of I course. appreciate it. Of course.